Hey, welcome back to How to Barbecue Right. I'm Malcolm Reed. Today I'm gonna to do some wild game for you. I've got a couple elk steaks that a buddy of mine gave me. If you've never cooked elk, it's some of the best tasting venison you can possibly get. And I'm gonna keep it simple. I want the meat to shine through. I'm just gonna use some salt and pepper. We're gonna sear it real fast, keep it more on the rare, medium rare side, and it's gonna be fantastic. Let's get to cooking. So the first thing we're gonna do is get a little salt and coarse black pepper on these elk steaks. Like I said, I don't want anything heavy on them. I really wanna taste the natural flavor of that elk. So I've got a little bit of coarse kosher salt. I'm just gonna put a couple pinches on both sides. A Little bit of coarse ground black pepper. And that's pretty much it. I don't want any other seasonings. I just wanna taste that elk, taste that flavor. Flip them over, we'll do the same thing to the back side. A little bit of coarse kosher salt, a little bit of black pepper. So the steaks are ready. That's all they needed was the salt and pepper. Now let's talk about how we're gonna cook these steaks. Today I'm fired up my Weber kettle grill. You could use any grill you want. B&B lump oak charcoal in there. Those coals are getting good and hot. And I've set my Gabby Grills Santa Maria attachment right on top. It's gonna to give me the ability to raise and lower the grate so I can get just the right amount of heat. Now, instead of cooking these steaks directly on a grill grate, and you could do that, I'm gonna sear them in a cast iron pan. It's gonna create a nice crust on the outside and it's perfect for cooking thinner steaks like this. So my cast iron skillet's been on the coals for a few minutes to let it get good and hot. Now we're gonna add some butter to it right before we put the steaks on. And I'm gonna do these one at a time. You can see the butter start to melt. That's how you wanna see it. You know it's good and hot. We'll move it over just a little bit, get some over in the middle. Now we're ready for the steak. We're just gonna lay it right on the skillet, start searing, and it only takes a couple minutes. You wanna set a timer for about two minutes. That's gonna give us that nice crust on the downside. Then we're gonna flip it over in just a minute and we'll finish the other side. I'm also gonna throw in a little garlic. Got a sprig of rosemary that's going in to give it some flavor. And I'm gonna add just a touch more butter. And then as soon as that rosemary and garlic starts heating up in that butter, it starts smelling awesome. I'm talking about aroma. And that's what we're gonna base the backside of this elk with. So our timer's done. Now we're just gonna give the steak a flip right here in the iron skillet and look at all that nice crust that we put on that steak. It's brown. And you wanna get that timer set for another two minutes. And what we're gonna do is wear some heat gloves and we're gonna start taking some of this butter and this garlic and we're just gonna drizzle it over the top. We've got about 50 seconds to go and I'm just kinda of testing it. It's feeling a little rare still, but it's almost there. So after four total minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and call this elk steak done. And what I'm gonna do is take it up and let it rest while we cook the other steak. It needs about five to 10 minutes rest. We're just gonna let this hang out. You wanna wear some heat gloves and we're just gonna wipe our pan out and start over. So we're melting some more butter. We're ready for our steak to go down. Make sure it's making good contact with that cast iron. Can't forget to throw in our garlic, a little more rosemary. Mix those around, get them happy in there. Now we're gonna give the second steak a flip. Oh, look at that nice crust that's made on it. I kinda of like throwing that garlic and rosemary up on top just a little bit. So let some of it get on the meat. All right, that's it for our second steak. We're gonna take it over to the tray where the other one's resting here. But check that out, you can just hear that sizzle. All right, these elk steaks have rested about five, seven minutes. That's about all they needed. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the one that we cooked first. I'll just bring it over here close to us. I don't need that. You can, no, that's just for looks there. I'm not eating that rosemary and garlic. What I wanna do is cut it right in half to see what kind of cook we got on it. And check that, I mean, that is a thing of beauty there. I'm gonna prop that open. I hope y'all can see this on camera. It's good, I'd call that medium rare for me. That might be rare to some people. That's medium rare to me, but it's got some really, really good pink to it. Still real red in the middle, some juice coming out. That's what I want. But the main thing is, how does it taste? And elk is always incredible. I'm gonna get a bite here. I mean, look at that, that is just beautiful. I'm gonna get a bite right here. I mean, that right there is better than beef. It's got just a natural flavor. There's no gaminess at all. All that gaminess that people say they get in venison just comes from not processing it properly. If you take the time to take that sinew off, uh, to take all the fat off and just get it down to the lean meat, 
it's the best red meat that you can eat. This just elk just melts in your mouth. I mean, it just has such a great flavor. And I'm telling you, cook medium rare like this, that's the way to go it because you preserve all that natural flavor. I can eat this whole steak, it's that good. And I really like cooking it in that iron skillet because it puts that nice crust on the outside. It, it kind of seals in all that flavor and it was just salt and black pepper. We picked up some notes from the rosemary, from the garlic, from the butter, but all that's real subtle. It's not overpowering at all. The butter does give it a richness because you need a little. Elk is super lean, all venison is. But man, I'm telling you, all right, this right here will make a dinner and it's healthy for you. Now, I don't know about all the butter, but hey, that's my spin on it. But y'all gotta try this. It is fantastic. Thanks for checking us out today here at How to Barbecue Right. If you like what we're doing, you can subscribe to the channel. You can find us on our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all at How to Barbecue Right. We've got an app and we wrap this week up with a podcast every Friday. Y'all check us out next time. We'll be putting out videos all year long. We'll see y'all.